Good day. Welcome to the Hogad Amy Zion Church, uh, which is located in Jackson, in St. Michael, in the island of Barbados. Uh, today is our meditation, a psalm a day, and our focus is on Psalm 80 and the subject of reconciliation. In verses 3, 7, and 19 of Psalm 80, we read these words. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. Everyone faced with calamity, destruction, dis and distress desire some form of restoration and reconciliation. The question faced by us today, highlighted by the age of the Black Lives Matter movement, is the question, is an, an apology enough for restoration and reconciliation? Restoration acknowledges that there is a broken relationship implied is that wrongdoing has been fractured and that a relationship has been fractured. Restoration is therefore supposed to lead to a process of reconciliation and reconciliation requires confession, contrition, respect, reparation, and renewal. Asaf pleads on behalf of the survivors of the Babylonian massacre for God to intervene and bring about restoration in quick time. So in verse 4, 5, and 6, Asaf prays, How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have made us an object of derision to our neighbors and our enemies mock us. Stop being angry. Get over it. These are the words of some people when we mention the issues around slavery and colonialism. It certainly reminds me of a British uh, Prime Minister who, in speaking to the Jamaican people, who were uh, speaking and demanding reparation, he said, get over it. Slavery is gone. Get over it. It would be 70 years before a remnant from the Jewish people would return to the site of the destruction called Jerusalem and begin a rebuilding program for the city and the temple. The point I am making here is that it, it costs to restore a fractured relationship. Next, uh, as part of that cost is the issue of time. Reconciliation takes time. The Babylonians were not willing to reconcile because they were in a position of power and privilege. And I guess that is the evidence that comes from uh, America, the United States of America and Europe. That from a position of power, one does not feel it necessary to make any kind of reparation and reconciliation is always a distant ideal. However, we seem to be quick to forget that that which we meet out to others would be meted out to us. Or as my granny used to say, what goes around comes around. The Babylonians, that superpower of the sixth century, would soon fall to the Medio-Persian Empire. As a matter of fact, 
less than 50 years after they took the Jews into captivity in Babylon. They themselves were destroyed. They had inherited the Medo Persian Empire, they inherited all the Babylonian wealth that was stolen from the Jews and which was then returned to the Jews as they were allowed to return to Jerusalem. In other words, some measure of reparations were given to the Jews to return to the city and to rebuild the city and the temple. So if you wish reconciliation in a family, a relationship, or in negotiations with a trade union, is all a necessary process. An apology is good, but it is not enough. A statement of regret is way below the mark. A statement of regret from European colonial slavers is not enough, especially given the fact that the consequences of the wrongdoing did not only bring untold wealth to Europe, but it is still bearing fruit and producing wealth for them today. So in other words, their sin and exploitation, disadvantage and discrimination still profits them. Furthermore, those who have been wronged in these former colonies continue to bear the burden of unfair and disadvantaged arrangements, contracts and institutions. These many of the institutions are committed to colonialism even after political independence has been given. The descendants of these colonial masters, some still living amongst us in the islands, live off of the fruit of illicit profit, privilege, and prosperity. And these are the same ones who are saying to us, get over it. Slavery was a long time ago. I never enslaved anyone. And to rub salt into the womb, they now ask, why can't we live together? Why can't we be reconciled? I believe that reconciliation can only come when there is an honest appraisal of the situation. When we recognize that there has been wrongdoing, we repent, and then we seek to repair those relationships for the future. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you, O oh God, for reconciling us to yourself. Thank you, O oh God, for paying the cost. Help us, O oh God, as we seek to be reconciled, that we too pay the cost that is necessary for closer relationships between humankind. We ask in your name. Amen. May God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. If this video has been a blessing to you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pass the link on to your family and friends and give us a thumbs up. God bless. Bye-bye.